I've singled out four processes that I think uh, age us, and they are systemic, and they operate on the heart and the brain and the lungs and the joints and the muscles and just about every system, the immune system, the hormone system, and one of them is stress. Now, stress doesn't necessarily cause these diseases, although in some cases it, it can, but it exacerbates almost any condition you can mention. Uh, stress can cause an outbreak of, of herpes simplex. It can cause an outbreak of asthma. It can cause an outbreak of acne. And it can certainly make serious degenerative diseases a lot worse. So there's a, a very intimate connection between stress and aging. Uh, stress shrinks. And when I say stress, I'm talking about the hormones that your body uh, secretes in response to stressful situations, such as cortisol or adrenaline. These hormones, particularly cortisol, actually shrink areas of the brain, particularly the hippocampus, which has to do with thinking and memory and cognition. And in studies, people or, or lab animals who are under a great deal of stress actually have smaller hippocampuses. Their memory is impaired. Uh, their resources are spent dealing with the stress. So you, you find that when you're under a lot of stress, you don't remember things as well. Uh, you don't control your appetite as well because you can only kind of concentrate on so many things. And if one of them is the emergency that stress is a signal about, uh, then controlling your appetite isn't really going to be high on the list. Uh, digesting food isn't going to be high on the list. You're trying to survive. Stress is a very primitive signal to the body. It, it was meant to tell our Paleolithic ancestors that there's a woolly mammoth coming and that you better be able to either run up a tree or pick up a club and fight him off. That's why it's called the fight or flight hormone. Now, these hormones keep us alive. They have tremendous survival uh, uh, purpose, but they weren't meant to be on all the time. They weren't meant kind of like the fifth gear in your car. They're not meant to be pedal to the metal all the time. And unfortunately, uh, most of us in the way that we live uh, have that stress hormone dial turned up far more than it should be. Reducing stress is not an easy thing to do in our current industrialized, westernized society. But there are some things that you can do to lower stress hormones, and they're, they're very effective. One of them, and I would consider this to be one of the top anti-aging strategies I know of, and I talk about it in the book, is deep breathing. Uh, and it doesn't take that much. See, there's a couple things about deep breathing. Number one, when you take deep breaths, really deep from the diaphragm, slow, uh, conscious breaths in and out. That's kind of incompatible with the stress response. That's why people will tell you when somebody's really angry, they say count to 10 or take a deep breath, because we intuitively know that that's not really compatible with the stress response. It's, it lowers blood pressure, it lowers cortisol. So meditation, which not everybody can do, and, and it's tough for some people, it's tough for me, uh, works by doing exactly what deep breathing does. So if you can't meditate, if you can meditate, all power to you. That's probably the best stress release, re reliever or, or uh, best strategy for bringing down stress hormones that's ever been tested. But if you can't do that, even four to five minutes a day of just sitting quietly and doing deep breathing, counting in for four, out for four, concentrating only on your breath. Anybody can do that for four minutes. I'm the most ADD high energy guy I know, and I can do it for four minutes. So if you do that for four minutes a day, even a couple times a day, you actually do kind of, it's sort of like putting the, 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 the uh, in a tea kettle, opening up that little thing to allow some pressure to, to escape. And it really does reduce the, uh, the level of cortisol in the body. And that goes a long way towards reducing overall systemic stress. Another thing that you can do, uh, and I talk about this also in, in the, uh, the what to do section of my, of my uh, Live Longer book, is um, make a gratitude list. Wake up in the morning and list 10 things you're grateful for. The kinds of things we think about when we think about what we're really grateful for is not compatible with anger and, and, um, and rage and, and worry. And if we can just relax for a minute and act, put some attention, some mindful attention on things that we're grateful for, um, or things we could do for others, it really goes a long way towards kind of balancing out that freneticness that comes with stress. And it does relieve stress and reduce cortisol. Mm -hmm.